April 12th through 18th. Doctrine and Covenants, sections 37 through 40. If ye are not one, ye are not mine. Recording impressions as you study is one way you can obey God's counsel to treasure up wisdom. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 38, verse 30. To the early saints, the church was more than a place to hear some preaching on Sunday. Throughout his revelations to Joseph Smith, the Lord described the church with words like cause, kingdom, Zion, and quite often work. That may have been part of what attracted many early members to the church. As much as they loved the church's restored doctrine, many also wanted something they could dedicate their lives to. Even so, the Lord's 1830 command to the saints to gather in Ohio was not an easy one to follow. For people like Phoebe Carter, it meant leaving comfortable homes for an unfamiliar frontier. See Voices of the Restoration at the end of this outline. Today we can see clearly what those saints could see only with the eye of faith. The Lord had great blessings waiting for them in Ohio. The need to gather to Ohio has long since passed. But saints today still unite around the same cause, the same work, to bring forth Zion. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 39, verse 13. Like those early saints, we forsake the cares of the world. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 40, verse 2. Because we trust the Lord's promise, you shall receive a blessing so great as you never have known. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 39, verse 10. See also Saints, volume 1, pages 109 through 111. Ideas for Personal Scripture Study Doctrine and Covenants, section 37, verse 1. What was Joseph Smith translating in 1830? In this verse, the Lord was referring to Joseph Smith's work on an inspired revision of the Bible, which was referred to as a translation. When Joseph received the revelation recorded in section 37, he had completed a few chapters of the book of Genesis and had just learned about Enoch and his city of Zion. See Genesis chapter 5 verses 18 through 24. See also Moses chapter 7. Some of the principles the Lord taught Enoch are similar to those he revealed in section 38. See also Church History Topics, Joseph Smith Translation of the Bible. Church of Jesus Christ dot org slash study slash topics. Doctrine and Covenants section thirty eight. God gathers us to bless us. The Lord concluded his command to gather to Ohio by saying, Behold, here is wisdom. See Doctrine and Covenants section thirty seven verse four. But not everyone saw the wisdom in it right away. In section 38, the Lord revealed His wisdom in more detail. What do you learn from verses 11 through 33 about the blessings of gathering? Church members are no longer commanded to gather by moving to one location. In what ways do we gather today? How do these blessings apply to us? See Russell M. Nelson, The Gathering of Scattered Israel, Ensign or Leohona, November 2006. As you read the rest of this section, look for passages that may have helped the saints gain the faith they needed to obey God's commandment to gather in Ohio. Also think about commandments He has given you and the faith you need to obey them. The following questions could guide your study. What do you find in verses 1 through 4 that gives you confidence in the Lord and His commandments? How can verse 39 help you obey God's commandments even when they require sacrifice. What else do you find? Doctrine and Covenants, section 38, verses 11 through 13, 22 through 32, and 41 through 42. If I am prepared, I need not fear. The saints had already faced much opposition, and the Lord knew more was coming. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 38, verses 11 through 13, and verses 28 through 29. To help them not be afraid, he revealed a precious principle. Quote, if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. End quote. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 38, verse 30. Take a minute to ponder the challenges you face. Then, as you study section 38, 
Listen for promptings from the Spirit about ways you can prepare for challenges so that you need not fear. See also Ronald A. Rasband, Be Not Troubled, Ensign or Liahona, November 2018. Doctrine and Covenants Sections 39-40 through 40. The cares of the world must not distract me from obeying God's Word. Read Sections 39-40, through 40, including the historical background in the section headings, and consider ways James Colville's experience might apply to you. For example, think of times when your heart was right before God. See Doctrine and Covenants section 40, verse 1. How were you blessed for your faithfulness? Also think of what cares of the world you face. See Doctrine and Covenants section 39, verse 9, and section 40, verse 2. What do you find in these sections that inspires you to be more consistently obedient? See also Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 through 23. Ideas for Family Scripture Study and Home Evening Doctrine and Covenants, section 37, verse 3. To help your family understand the sacrifice the saints made to gather to Ohio, you could refer to the map that accompanies this outline. Doctrine and Covenants, section 38, verse 22. How can we make Jesus Christ our family's lawgiver? How does following His laws make us a free people? Doctrine and Covenants, section 38, verses 24 through 27. To teach children what it means to be one, you could help them count the members of your family and talk about why each person is important to your family. Emphasize that together you are one family. You could help your children draw a large one on a poster and decorate it with names and drawings or pictures of each family member. You could also write on the poster things you will do to be more united as a family. You might also watch the video, Love in Our Hearts, see churchofjesuschrist.org, or read Moses chapter 7, verse 18. Doctrine and Covenants, section 38, verses 29 through 30. You could discuss recent family or personal experiences that required preparation. How did your preparation affect the experience? What does the Lord want us to prepare for? How can being prepared help us not to be fearful? What can we do to prepare? Doctrine and Covenants, section 40. What does the phrase cares of the world, in verse 2, mean to us? Are there any cares of the world that are preventing us from receiving God's word with gladness? How will we overcome them? For more ideas for teaching children, see this week's outline in Come Follow Me for Primary. Suggested song, Jesus Said Love Everyone. See Children's Songbook, page 61. Voices of the Restoration, Gathering to Ohio Among the many saints who gathered to Ohio in the 1830s was Phoebe Carter. She joined the church in the northeastern United States in her mid-twenties, though her parents did not. She later wrote of her decision to move to Ohio to unite with the saints. Quote, my friends marveled at my course, as I did, but something within impelled me on. My mother's grief at my leaving was almost more than I could bear, and had it not been for the spirit within, I should have faltered at the last. My mother told me she would rather see me buried than going thus alone out into the heartless world. Phoebe, she said impressively, Will you come back to me if you find Mormonism false? I answered, Yes, Mother, I will. My answer relieved her trouble, but it cost us all much sorrow to part. When the time came for my departure, I dared not trust myself to say farewell, so I wrote my goodbyes to each, and leaving them on my table, ran downstairs and jumped into the carriage. Thus I left the beloved home of my childhood to link my life to the saints of God. End quote. See footnote number one at the end of the chapter. In one of those farewell messages, Phoebe wrote, quote, Beloved parents, I am now about to leave my paternal roof for a while. I know not how long, but not without grateful feelings for the kindness which I have received from my infancy until the present time. But providence seems to order it otherwise now than it has been. Let us commit all these things into the hands of providence, 
and be thankful that we have been permitted to live together so long under so favorable circumstances as we have, believing that all things will work for our good if we love God supremely. Let us realize that we can pray to one God who will hear the sincere prayers of all His creatures and give us that which is best for us. Mother, I believe it is the will of God for me to go to the West, and I have been convinced that it has been for a long time. Now the way is opened. I believe that it is the Spirit of the Lord that has done it, which is sufficient for all things. Oh, be not anxious for your child. The Lord will comfort me. I believe that the Lord will take care of me and give me that which is for the best. I go because my Master calls. He has made my duty plain. End quote. See footnote 2 at the end of the chapter, which states, Phoebe Carter, Letter to Her Parents, No Date, Church History Library, Salt Lake City. Phoebe joined the church in 1834, moved to Ohio around 1835, and married Wilfred Woodruff in 1837. Section 37. Revelation given to Joseph Smith the Prophet and Sidney Rigdon, near Fayette, New York, December 1830. Herein is given the first commandment concerning a gathering in this dispensation. 1 through 4. The saints are called to gather at the Ohio. Behold, I say unto you, that it is not expedient in me that ye should translate any more until ye shall go to the Ohio, and this because of the enemy, and for your sakes. And again I say unto you that ye shall not go until ye have preached my gospel in those parts and have strengthened up the church whithersoever it is found, and more especially in Colesville. For behold, they pray unto me in much faith. And again a commandment I give unto the church, that it is expedient in me that they should assemble together at the Ohio, against the time that my servant Oliver Cowdery shall return unto them. Behold, here is wisdom, and let every man choose for himself until I come. Even so, Section 38. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet at Fayette, New York, January 2, 1831. The occasion was a conference of the Church. 1 through 6. Christ created all things. 7 through 8. He is in the midst of His saints, who will soon see Him. 9 through 12. All flesh is corrupted before Him. 13 through 22. He has reserved a land of promise for his saints in time and in eternity. 23 through 27. The saints are commanded to be one and esteem each other as brethren. 28 through 29. Wars are predicted. 30 through 33. The saints are to be given power from on high and to go forth among all nations. 34 through 42. The church is commanded to care for the poor and needy and to seek the riches of eternity. Thus saith the Lord your God, even Jesus Christ, the great I am, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the same which looked upon the wide expanse of eternity and all the seraphic hosts of heaven before the world was made, the same which knoweth all things for all things are present before mine eyes. I am the same which spake, and the world was made, and all things came by me. I am the same which have taken the Zion of Enoch into mine own bosom. And verily I say, Even as many as have believed in my name, for I am Christ, and in mine own name, by the virtue of the blood which I have spilt, have I pleaded before the Father for them. But behold, the residue of the wicked have I kept in chains of darkness until the judgment of the great day, which shall come at the end of the earth. And even so will I cause the wicked to be kept, that will not hear my voice but harden their hearts. And woe, woe, woe is their doom. But behold, verily, verily I say unto you, that mine eyes are upon you. I am in your midst, and ye cannot see me. But the day soon cometh that ye shall see me. And know that I am, for the veil of darkness shall soon be rent, and he that is not purified shall not abide the day. 
Wherefore, gird up your loins and be prepared. Behold, the kingdom is yours, and the enemy shall not overcome. Verily I say unto you, Ye are clean, but not all, and there is none else with whom I am well pleased. For all flesh is corrupted before me, and the powers of darkness prevail upon the earth, among the children of men, in the presence of all the hosts of heaven, which causeth silence to reign, and all eternity is pained, and the angels are waiting the great command to reap down the earth, to gather the tares that they may be burned. And behold, the enemy is combined. And now I show unto you a mystery, a thing which is had in secret chambers, to bring to pass even your destruction in process of time, and ye knew it not. But now I tell it unto you, and ye are blessed, not because of your iniquity, neither your hearts of unbelief. For verily some of you are guilty before me, but I will be merciful unto your weakness. Therefore be ye strong from henceforth. Fear not, for the kingdom is yours. And for your salvation I give unto you a commandment. For I have heard your prayers, and the poor have complained before me, and the rich have I made, and all flesh is mine, and I am no respecter of persons. And I have made the earth rich, and behold, it is my footstool. Wherefore, again, I will stand upon it. And I hold forth and deign to give unto you greater riches, even a land of promise, a land flowing with milk and honey, upon which there shall be no curse when the Lord cometh. And I will give it unto you for the land of your inheritance, if you seek it with all your hearts. And this shall be my covenant with you, Ye shall have it for the land of your inheritance, and for the inheritance of your children forever, while the earth shall stand, and ye shall possess it again in eternity, no more to pass away. But verily I say unto you that in time ye shall have no king nor ruler, for I will be your king, and watch over you. Wherefore hear my voice, and follow me, and you shall be a free people, and ye shall have no laws but my laws when I come. For I am your lawgiver, and what can stay my hand? But verily I say unto you, Teach one another according to the office wherewith I have appointed you. And let every man esteem his brother as himself, and practice virtue and holiness before me. And again I say unto you, Let every man esteem his brother as himself. For what man among you, having twelve sons, and is no respecter of them, and they serve him obediently? And he saith unto the one, be thou clothed in robes, and sit thou here, and to the other, Be thou clothed in rags, and sit thou there, and looketh upon his sons, and saith, I am just. Behold, this I have given unto you as a parable, and it is even as I am. I say unto you, Be one, and if ye are not one, ye are not mine. And again I say unto you that the enemy in the secret chambers seeketh your lives. Ye hear of wars in far countries, and you say that there will soon be great wars in far countries, but ye know not the hearts of men in your own land. I tell you these things because of your prayers. Wherefore, treasure up wisdom in your bosoms, lest the wickedness of men reveal these things unto you by their wickedness, in a manner which shall speak in your ears with a voice louder than that which shall shake the earth. But if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear and that he might escape the power of the enemy, and be gathered unto me a righteous people, without spot and blameless. Wherefore for this cause I gave unto you the commandment, that ye should go to the Ohio, and there I will give unto you my law, and there you shall be endowed with power from on high, and from thence, whosoever I will shall go forth among all nations, and it shall be told them what they shall do. For I have a great work laid up in store, for Israel shall be saved, and I will lead them whithersoever I will, and no power shall stay my hand. And now I give unto the church in these parts a commandment, that certain men among them shall be appointed, and they shall be appointed by the voice of the church. And they shall look to the poor and the needy, and administer to their relief that they shall not suffer, and send them forth to the place which I have commanded them. And this shall be their work, to govern the affairs of the property of this church. And they that have farms that cannot be sold, let them be left or rented as seemeth them good. See that all things are preserved, 
And when men are endowed with power from on high and sent forth, all these things shall be gathered unto the bosom of the church. And if ye seek the riches which it is the will of the Father to give unto you, ye shall be the richest of all people, for ye shall have the riches of eternity. And it must needs be that the riches of the earth are mine to give. But beware of pride, lest ye become as the Nephites of old. And again I say unto you, I give unto you a commandment, that every man, both elder, priest, teacher, and also member, go to with his might, with the labor of his hands, to prepare and accomplish the things which I have commanded. And let your preaching be the warning voice, every man to his neighbor, in mildness and in meekness. And go ye out from among the wicked, save yourselves, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord, even so. Section 39. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the prophet to James Covell at Fayette, New York, January 5, 1831. James Covell, who had been a Methodist minister for about forty years, covenanted with the Lord that he would obey any command that the Lord would give to him through Joseph the prophet. 1 through 4. The saints have power to become the sons of God. 5 through 6. To receive the gospel is to receive Christ. 7 through 14. James Covell is commanded to be baptized and labor in the Lord's vineyard. 15 through 21. The Lord's servants are to preach the gospel before the second coming. 22 through 24. Those who receive the gospel will be gathered in time and in eternity. Hearken and listen to the voice of Him who is from all eternity to all eternity, the great I Am, even Jesus Christ, the light and the life of the world, a light which shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not, the same which came in the meridian of time unto mine own, and mine own received me not. But to as many as received me gave I power to become my sons, and even so will I give unto as many as will receive me power to become my sons. And verily, verily I say unto you, He that receiveth my gospel receiveth me, and he that receiveth not my gospel receiveth not me. And this is my gospel, repentance and baptism by water. And then cometh the baptism of fire and the Holy Ghost, even the Comforter, which showeth all things and teacheth the peaceable things of the kingdom. And now behold, I say unto you, my servant James, I have looked upon thy works, and I know thee. And verily I say unto thee, Thine heart is now right before me at this time, and behold, I have bestowed great blessings upon thy head. Nevertheless, thou hast seen great sorrow, for thou hast rejected me many times because of pride and the cares of the world. But behold, the days of thy deliverance are come, if thou wilt hearken to my voice, which saith unto thee, Arise, and be baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on my name, and you shall receive my Spirit, and a blessing so great as you never have known. And if thou do this, I have prepared thee for a greater work. Thou shalt preach the fullness of my gospel which I have sent forth in these last days, the covenant which I have sent forth to recover my people, which are of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass that power shall rest upon thee. Thou shalt have great faith, and I will be with thee and go before thy face. Thou art called to labor in my vineyard, and to build up my church, and to bring forth Zion, that it may rejoice upon the hills and flourish. Behold, verily, verily I say unto thee, Thou art not called to go into the eastern countries, but thou art called to go to the Ohio. And inasmuch as my people shall assemble themselves at the Ohio, I have kept in store a blessing such as is not known among the children of men, and it shall be poured forth upon their heads, and from thence men shall go forth into all nations. Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, that the people in Ohio call upon me in much faith, thinking I will stay my hand in judgment upon the nations. But I cannot deny my word. Wherefore lay to with your might, and call faithful laborers into my vineyard, that it may be pruned for the last time. 
And inasmuch as they do repent and receive the fullness of my gospel and become sanctified, I will stay mine hand in judgment. Wherefore go forth, crying with a loud voice, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand, crying, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Most High God. Go forth, baptizing with water, preparing the way before my face for the time of my coming. For the time is at hand, the day or the hour no man knoweth, but it surely shall come. And he that receiveth these things receiveth me, and they shall be gathered unto me in time and in eternity. And again, it shall come to pass that on as many as ye shall baptize with water, ye shall lay your hands, and they shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and shall be looking forth for the signs of my coming, and shall know me. Behold, I come quickly, even so. Section 40 Revelation given to Joseph Smith the Prophet and Sidney Rigdon at Fayette, New York, January 6, 1831 Preceding the record of this revelation, the Prophet's history states, As James Covell rejected the word of the Lord and returned to his former principles and people, the Lord gave unto me and Sidney Rigdon the following revelation. See section 39. 1 through 3. Fear of persecution and cares of the world cause rejection of the gospel. Behold, verily I say unto you, that the heart of my servant James Covell was right before me, for he covenanted with me that he would obey my word. And he received the word with gladness, but straightway Satan tempted him, and the fear of persecution and the cares of the world caused him to reject the word. Wherefore he broke my covenant, and it remaineth with me to do with him as seemeth me good.